I'm actually very hopeful uh, about air pollution and I do believe that we are uh, finally starting to sort of get somewhere in terms of dealing with this problem in a really um, constructive way. What's really encouraging to see is the amount of philanthropic funding going to air quality in India is increasing a lot every year, um, albeit it was from a very low base. So obviously there's still a huge way to go in terms of getting funding into this area. So I think the science and technology has made significant progress. The policies of course have not kept up. But now is the time to bridge the gap between policy, compliance and implementation. One heartening uh, thing over the last year has been the increased level of political engagement with the issue. I think that's something that has definitely improved for the better. Um, it's not enough actually providing that autonomy, actually allocating sufficient resources. And, and that's something that's still missing. Actually, we have all of the data and evidence today that we didn't have five years ago. I think what we have to do better is ensure that the data and evidence um, are provided as tools to people so that they believe and they know that these are solutions that they can actually come in on. I think the biggest problem with air quality is the lack of action. A lot more communication that needs to happen to raise clarity about not only what the condition is, but also how this can be solved in very simple terms. That just isn't enough of air quality governance. Uh, and, and I think that, that remains the, the major stumbling block. So it's a good thing today that National Clean Air Program has set a target for the polluting cities, polluted cities in this country. But where is your legal compliance framework to ensure that they do it? Where is the teeth in the system? It really is about integrating different efforts um, and making sure that the response is systemic and holistic, which, is, which isn't necessarily the case right now. I will be slightly ambitious and I would say that in the next five years, we need to uh, you know, greatly uh, uh, reduce the number of non-compliant cities. I'm fairly optimistic, frankly, because I've been seeing this space for the last four years and there is a quantum shift in the way the whole space is, you know, approaching the problem. I'm hopeful, uh, but I also understand that we need to do a lot more work to make sure that the, the real change that needs to happen for air quality actually happens. I mean, it's an either or like situation. Either you're falling off a cliff and, you know, the air pollution is getting worse and worse and you're going to see more and more deaths um, and it continue to be a pervasive issue. Or, and this is the side that I'm on, you really actually have, um, you know, interventions at scale that are integrated and are, you know, uh, across a multiplicity of sort of solutions and actors coming together to really deal with this problem. I'm actually very hopeful.